His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, issued a royal decree pardoning 457 convicts on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne. The royal pardon reflects His Majesty's keenness on the cohesion and solidity of Bahraini society and the protection of its social fabric and firms the commitment to the principles of justice and the rule of law and maintaining judicial independence and reconciling the punishment with the human and social circumstances of the convicts, in addition to providing an opportunity for positive integration into society in a manner that upholds human rights, values and standards in line with the Kingdom's approach and its regional weight in this regard. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace senior royal family members, the Speaker of the Representatives Council, senior official citizens and a number of people who have made achievements to greet His Majesty the King.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة أيها السيدات والسادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته يشرفنا أن نرحب بكم في هذا الجمع الطيب وخير ما نبدأ به تلاوة عطرة من القرآن الكريم يتلوها على مسامعنا القارئ علي صلاح عمر Verses from the Holy Quran were then recited من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق قَتُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرُ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ يَوْمَ تَبْيَضُّ وُجُوهٌ وَتَسْوَدُّ وُجُوهٌ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ اسْوَدَّتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ أَكَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ فَذُوقُوا الْعَذَابَ فَذُوقُوا الْعَذَابَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ بِيَضَّتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ فَفِي رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ فَفِي رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ تلك آيات الله نتلوها عليك بالحق وما الله يريد ظلما للعالمين صدق الله العظيم يتفضل سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة his Majesty the King then delivered the following speech. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nurahhab bidayatan bi jam'akum al-kareem. Al-lazhi nubadilukum fih al-tahiyya wa al-taghdeer. لكل ما تبدونه لنا وللبحرين القالية من مشاعر الولاء والمحبة ويسرنا أن نلتقي بكم لنحتفي بإنجازاتكم التي أدخلت على نفسنا الفخر والسرور وبما يجدد لدينا الأمل الواثق بالله أولاً 
وبالمستقبل الواعد لهذه البلاد المعطاة والحاضنة لكل مسعى مخلص كما أتوجه بشكري الخاص لحفظة القرآن الكريم وأسأل الله أن يبارك فيهم وينفعهم بما حفظوا والذين نعتز بتواجدهم بيننا اليوم لينالوا التكريم على ما أنجزوا وفي مثل هذه المناسبة المباركة نشد على يد كل مجتهد يحرص على استمرار الأعراف والتقاليد الأصيلة في الخدمة الوطنية وكما ورثناها عن الآباء والأجداد الذين كتبوا بدورهم أروع قصص المجد وتعلمنا منهم أبلغ المعاني في نيل المعالي وأنها لسيرة مجيدة تجعل من البحرين موطنا دائما للسلام والوئام بدفاع عن قيم التعايش والتسامح وبالتمسك بمواقفه الثابتة من أجل استغرار ورخاء مجتمعاتنا الإنسانية وأننا لنفخر بكم وبكل إنجاز وطني يجعل من شرف خدمة الوطن الغالي هدفه الأسمى وننظر لجميع هذه النجاحات كالزاد الذي يقوي روح الانتماء ويثري العطاء ونحن نتجه للقد المشرق بكل تطلعاته الجميلة وبمناسبة بداية العام الدراسي الجديد نهنئ جميع الطلبة والطالبات في الجامعات والمدارس الحكومية والخاصة والمعاهد ونتمنى للجميع دوام التوفيق وعاما دراسيا حافلا بالتفوق والنجاح والتميز فأهلا وسهلا بكم مرة أخرى مع أخلص التمنيات لكم بدوام التوفيق وإلى لقاءات قادمة بمشيئة الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The winner is yeah, the 28th Bahrain Grand Prize, which is held under the Royal Patronage of His Majesty the King, the branch of memorizing the Holy Quran, and the winners of international competitions then greeted His Majesty, who in turn congratulated them and thanked them for their efforts and keenness to honor Bahrain, wishing them success. The winners are Azam Abdullah Saleh Muhammad, first place, Omar Hamid Abu Bakr Janahi, second place, Abdullah Tuayrish Sayah Al Anizi, third place. Ruqayya Abdul Mu'min Muhammad Abdul Al, first place. Inshirah Hamdi Muhammad Abu Talib, second place. Fathiya Ali Makki Kazim, third place. Fatma Abdul Nabi Muhammad Mardi. The participants in international Quran competitions 2022 to 2024. Muhammad Samir, Muhammad Mujahid, winner of the first place in the BRICS Holy Quran. Award in Kazan, Russia, Recitation Branch 2024, and the Global Reciters Award in its fourth session and in the Malaysian and Palestinian competitions. Second, Muhammad Adnan, Muhammad Al Umari, first place winner of the Dubai International Holy Quran Award 2024, Quran Memorization Branch, and Algeria and Saudi Arabia competition winner. Ummatul Rahman, Badir Madhar. Second place winner of Sheikha Fatma Bint Mubarak International Award 2023, the branch of memorizing the Holy Quran. Fahd Adnan Muhammad Fakhro, second place winner of the Muhammad VI International Award for memorizing, reciting, intonation, and interpretation of the Holy Quran 2022, branch of memorizing the Holy Quran. Fifth, Abdul Rahman Badia Mazhar Abdullah. Third place winner in the King Abdul Aziz International Competition for the Memorization of the Holy Quran 2022. Hamza Muiz Ahmed Ali, fifth place winner of the Muhammad the Eighth International Award for Memorizing, Reciting, Intonation and Interpretation of the Holy Quran 2022. Isra 
Mahmoud, Mahmoud Sayyid Hassan Dawood, seventh place winner of the Sheikha Fatma Bint Mubarak International Award 2022. The participants in International Quran Competitions 2022 to 2024, People of Determination are Noor Abdul Razzag, Ghulam Shakib, first place winner of the Dubai Holy Quran Competition for People of Determination 2024, memorizing the Holy Quran and Ibrahim. Uthman Al Yafi'i, first place winner in the Prince Sultan bin Salman Al Saud Quran memorization competition, branch of memorizing Juz Amma. For their part, the attendees expressed pleasure to meet His Majesty the King, appreciating the authentic communication approach that he establishes with the citizens, as well as His Majesty's keenness to provide a decent living for the country's citizens at all levels. They praised His Majesty's wise leadership for the country's achievements and gains over the past years for the benefit of the country and the citizens, and prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty with good health and happiness and the kingdom with prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Peter Sizi Jarto, on the occasion of his visit to Bahrain. The Minister conveyed to His Majesty the greetings and appreciation of the President of Hungary, Dr. Tamás Soljok, along with his good wishes for further success and prosperity to the people of Bahrain. His Majesty the King requested the Hungarian Minister to convey his greetings and best wishes to the President of Hungary and wished Hungary and its friendly people further development. His Majesty praised the close ties of cooperation and friendship between both countries, noting that they are experiencing continuous growth across various fields that promote their mutual interest. His Majesty welcomed the visiting minister and discussed means to support and develop strong bilateral relations, as well as opportunities to further enhance cooperation, particularly in the political trade, economic investment, and other vital sectors. He said that such visits reflect a mutual interest in further fostering constructive work and joint cooperation. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's aspiration for further cooperation with Hungary, aiming to expand partnerships and leverage the expertise and capabilities of both countries in light of the agreements and memoranda of understanding signed between the two countries which are intended to benefit their friendly people. The meeting also discussed regional and international issues of common interest. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed al Salam, praised the royal decree issued by His Majesty the King, granting a comprehensive pardon to 457 convicts on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession. al Salam emphasized the royal pardon's firm and steadfast approach that reflects the wise humanitarian and paternal vision of His Majesty the King and the commitment in providing a decent life for all the citizens. He also referred to the relentless efforts and directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in implementing the royal aspirations, strengthening the human rights system, and presenting projects and programs for convict rehabilitation. The Shura Council Chairman Ali As Saleh praised the royal decree issued by His Majesty the King to pardon 457 convicts. He affirmed that His Majesty's wise directives reflect a humanitarian approach and solid values that promote justice, tolerance, and societal stability, expressing pride in His Majesty's care for all. As Saleh praised the role and efforts undertaken by the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to develop programs and implement government initiatives that highlight the values and principles of human rights in Bahrain. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, held a discussion session with the Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Peter Sizijarto, during his visit to Bahrain. The two ministers discussed the advanced level of cooperation between the two countries and the efforts made by Bahrain to enhance it at all political, economic, and commercial levels. They also discussed the close relations between the two friendly countries and development across all fields, as well as increasing cooperation in all the fields. The two ministers discussed regional and developments in international arena, such as the war on Gaza and the efforts to reach a permanent ceasefire, release hostages and detainees, and facilitate humanitarian aid delivery. Minister Azayani briefed the Hungarian minister on the outcome of the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by Bahrain and reviewed initiatives put forward by Bahrain and approved by the summit. 
Both sides stressed the need to end all global conflicts and disputes, including the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, and open up prospects for achieving stability and peace in the world for the good of all humanity, calling for an international peace conference to establish an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital, providing educational and health services to conflict-affected individuals and fostering cooperation in financial technology, innovation, and digital transformation. The two ministers signed an agreement to encourage and exchange investment protection between the two countries, develop economic and trade opportunities, and attract joint investments between the two sides. And the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, and the Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Peter Sajijarto, held a press conference to discuss the Hungarian minister's visit to Bahrain. As Zayani welcomed the visit, highlighting the distinguished level of relations between the two countries and the development and growth witnessed at all levels. Azayani also highlighted the importance of the Bahraini-Hungarian Joint Economic Committee in enhancing trade exchange and attracting investments in both countries. The two sides stressed the importance of the Bahraini-Hungarian Joint Economic Committee on enhancing trade exchange and trading investments. The Hungarian minister expressed pride and appreciation for the development and growth of the existing friendly relations between Bahrain and Hungary in various fields. He noted Bahrain's achievements during the COVID-19 pandemic and the support and assistance, assistance it provided Hungary during that period by documenting the Chinese vaccines used for Hungarian citizens. Both ministers held a productive meeting to discuss the development and growth of bilateral relations between the two countries. The Minister of Labor, Jamil Hamidan, participated in the 10th GCC Labor Ministers Committee meeting in Qatar on September the 2nd to the 4th with the participation of GCC Ministers of Labor. Hamidan stressed the importance of holding joint Gulf meetings in specialized fields, including the labor and human resources development, praising the GCC country's efforts in the field of exchanging experiences and benefiting from the pioneering ones and their joint keenness to enhance a sound work environment and provide suitable job opportunities for the citizens. The meeting also discussed enhancing the Gulf work process and the measures taken to facilitate the employment and transfer of GCC citizens for the purpose of work, discussing the development and empowerment of the workforce in the member states, in addition to discussing the issue of unifying Gulf professional standards and tests, enhancing occupational safety and health programs and legislation, adopting a unified data policy for labor markets and implementing the project to exchange experiences in the fields of human resources development and labor. And the Minister of Labor, Jamil Hamidan, met with his Qatari counterpart, Dr. Ali al marri on the sideline of the 10th GCC Labor Ministers Committee meeting in Qatar. The two sides discussed the means to benefit from the successful expertise and initiatives in private sector employment. They reviewed the latest developments in the labor market sector. Hamidan emphasized the importance of ministerial meetings in exchanging best practices to further develop the labor market systems in the Gulf through various initiatives aimed at enhancing the job localization in the private sector. The Minister of Social Development, Osama al Asfour, headed the ministry's delegation participating in the 10th meeting of the GCC Ministers of Social Affairs and Development held under the presidency of the Qatari Ministry of Social Development and Family. The ministers approved a number of items on the agenda, most notably the adoption of the GCC strategy in social development, unified policies on cohesion and the stability of the Gulf society, and strengthening Gulf citizenship and the Arab and Islamic identity, in addition to forming a team concerned with formulating a work plan to the GCC Council strategy on social development for 2023-2025 launching a unified guideline for the quality of domestic violence protection programs and strengthening the non-profit sector's relations with the government and private sectors. They also approved holding the 48th coordination meeting on the sidelines of the 44th session of the Arab Social Affairs Ministers Council and establishing a team on regional and international cooperation at the GCC level. The Minister of Social Development, Osama al Asfour attended a ceremony honoring the leading projects and figures in the field of social work at the GCC level. The event was held on the sideline of the 10th meeting of the GCC Committee of Ministers of Social Affairs and Development with the participation of GCC Ministers of Social Affairs and Development. 
Abdul Aziz Asindi from Bahrain was honored in the Pioneer in Social Work category. The Bahrain Food Bank won the Private Sector Projects category, while the National Bank of Bahrain won the Private Sector category for its efforts and contributions in serving the community. Al Asfour commended the honorees for their significant contributions to social, social work. He highlighted their leadership and excellence in positively influencing the community through humanitarian efforts and charitable giving, as well as their dedication to voluntary and development initiatives. He also expressed his pride in the development of work in Bahrain and the contributions of its pioneers and their great contributions within the framework of community partnership that benefits everyone. The Minister of Social Development, Osama al Asfour, met with the Minister of Social Affairs, Family Affairs and Childhood of Kuwait, Amthal al huwaila al Asfour stressed the depth of the close fraternal ties between Bahrain and Kuwait and the importance of enhancing the bilateral cooperation in various fields. And the two sides discussed the efforts to support and empower various segments of society through development projects and initiatives aimed at enhancing development and welfare fields in a sustainable manner and consolidating Gulf development efforts. Public schools in Bahrain welcomed over 153,000 students at the start of the new academic year in a supportive environment. This follows the return of administrative, educational and technical staff on September the 1st and the organization of an induction day on September 2nd and 3rd as part of the Ministry of Education's preparations for the school year and its commitment to ensure students receive an excellent education, wishing students a successful year ahead. On their first school day, students in Bahrain expressed their joy and excitement at returning to school and meeting their peers and classrooms. Bahraini schools received more than 153,000 students at the start of the new academic year. More details in this report. With an atmosphere of enthusiasm and happiness, students began their first school day of the new academic year early in the morning, gathering with their friends, colleagues and teachers bidding farewell to the summer vacation to begin a study journey of seriousness and activity. With the morning school assembly, students began their day with a mixture of feelings of loyalty and love of the homeland and keenness to follow the advice of the teaching staff and their families, to be a generation aware of the importance of education and the renaissance of the homeland. A new academic year in which the educational process is completed in Bahrain through the keenness of the Ministry of Education to provide the necessary services students to receive their new year with ease and success. The Ministry of Interior has intensified its efforts as the new academic year begins and security personnel from various directorates were present around the educational areas to organize traffic and secure the transportation of students, parents and members of the educational bodies. More details in this report. The new school year has begun with a focus on safety for roughly 153,000 students across 209 public schools. This improvement in traffic safety and ease of movement around schools is the result of extensive preparation by the Ministry of Interior, mainly the General Directorate of Traffic and the Community Service Police, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education. These efforts aim to create a secure environment for students, parents and school staff as they navigate school zones and surrounding streets. The Community Service Police and various governments have actively fulfilled their security and community responsibilities by deploying patrols around schools to ensure safety. Additionally, the Civil Defense conducted field visits to schools prior to the start of the school year to verify that they meet safety requirements and are prepared to welcome students. The commitment of students and educational authorities to public safety guidelines is crucial for the safe school year. However, parents also play a vital role by following preventive measures and procedures that prioritize student safety within schools. This collective effort aims to create a secure learning environment and ensure a successful and accident-free academic year. The Ministry of Health celebrates Arab Health Day, which is observed annually on September the 4th. This year's theme is promoting the One Health Approach. More details in this report. 
The continuous efforts of the Ministry of Health to provide integrated health care to all members of society and promote community awareness are the result of the government's keen interest in this sector as the Kingdom of Bahrain joins the Arab world in celebrating Arab Health Day under the theme promoting the One Health approach. Through joint efforts between various government agencies, private sector institutions and civil society organizations, Bahrain is keen to increase its efforts to promote healthy lifestyles in society, to achieve sustainable development goals and support Arab cooperation and solidarity in order to develop the health sector, considering health a top priority in societies through multiple Bahraini humanitarian initiatives, including improving health care for those affected by conflicts and disputes in the region, developing the pharmaceutical and vaccine industry in Arab countries, and and ensuring the availability of medicine and treatment in cooperation and coordination between the Arab League, the World Health Organization and Bahrain. The Kingdom of Bahrain has clearly contributed to enriching the best global practices, especially in the field of health emergency preparedness and response in various circumstances, in line with the sustainability of global health goals and the development of medical technology studies and research at the regional and global levels. The Ministry of Labor confirmed its continued effort to integrate job seekers into various private sector establishments by adopting many supportive initiatives and investing in available opportunities in cooperation with the relevant authorities. These efforts resulted in a rapid increase in employment rates and providing the labor market with more qualified national caters in various specializations. The Ministry explained the importance of close cooperation with Temkin in supporting efforts to qualify, employ and develop national competencies in the labor market and support their job stability by building caters that possess the required capabilities and skills. The Ministry emphasized the importance of job seekers registering on its electronic platform for continuous review and development and services and benefits related to employment and training. The CEO of LMRA, Nebras Mohammed Talib, affirmed the implementation of Decree Law 12 of 2024, which amends Article 40 of Law 19 of 2006 regarding the regulation of the labor market on the amendment of procedures and controls for reconciliation for crimes related to work permits. The CEO said that the authority continues to review and develop mechanisms and procedures regulating the labor market. He said that amending the reconciliation mechanism and procedures comes within the framework of implementing the National Labor Market Plan 2023-2026 and promoting compliance with the laws and regulations. He pointed out that these amendments came as a result of continuous consultation with partners noting that the new amendments give employers more flexibility to settle violations through reconciliation. The executive directorate of the by-elections for the representative councils announced that according to the applicable procedures, voters of the first constituency, constituency in Muharraq Governorate who will not have their passports in their possession on voting day due to loss or any other reason must go to the National Passports and Residence Affairs Branch at the Muharraq Security Complex on the day of the election or runoff to request the issuance of a voting card, which will be treated as an official document to participate in voting only, bearing in mind that the ID card must be present. It pointed out that if the passport expires during the period between the election and the runoff days, the passport can be used to complete the voting process, which will take place on Saturday, September the 7th, and in the case of a runoff on September 14th, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The Nationality Passports and Residency Affairs will be open from 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. on the 7th and 14th of September. The Information and E-Government Authority announced the official launch of the National Appointments System Mawaid application. The app is one of the winning ideas in the second edition of the FICRA Government Innovation Competitions. To speak more about this, we were joined over the phone by the Director of the E-Services and Channel Development Directorate at the Information and E-Government Authority, Ahmed al Blushi, who elaborated further. Uh, the mobile application. It's a centralized uh, digital pl platform 
uh, provided uh, to citizens, residents, and uh, visitors of Bahrain. It helped them uh, to facilitate booking appointments at uh, government services centers. As you know, actually, today, uh, the majority of uh, government services are available online. However, some services may require uh, physical attendance uh, at their respective service centers. And uh, Mawaid, which is the national appointment system, uh, and its mobile application has been developed uh, by IGA to make uh, the physical attendance experience uh, more enhanced and uh, with a better customer experience, uh, starting from the point where uh, the customer or the user wants to book the appointment. Uh, actually, our aim is to reinforce efficiency and effectiveness uh, for the government services in line with the government digital transformation objective and the government plan 2023 to 2026, which actually focuses on adapting new technologies and to streamline uh, public services. Algeria's embassy in Bahrain opened its doors to Algerians residing in the kingdom to participate in the polling process and vote for a president for the next stage during the 2024 presidential elections. More details in this report. As part of the continuation of its national march, the process of voting abroad for the 2024 presidential elections began in Algeria as its embassies opened their doors to Algerian abroad to start the voting process. In Bahrain, the Algerian embassy prepared all the necessary facilities and procedures to ensure the success of the voting process at the embassy headquarters in Manama. Algerians residing in Bahrain flocked to the embassy headquarters, which opened its doors for four days to perform their national responsibility, to vote for their country's next president, emphasizing the importance of this day, which adds a bright image in the history of the successful National March of Algeria. Towards a more distinguished and successful future, Algerians are setting an example of national responsibility and active participation in shaping the future of their country and realizing the hopes and aspirations of the Algerian people through these elections.